I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail, and the book covers bucktailing for a variety of species from surf, kayak, and boat. All right, we're just getting started here on Eastern Long Island Sound. I'm out with my son, Michael, and I'll try to keep the editing to a minimum here. I know you don't want to watch me untangling things from nets and stuff like that, so I cut that out, but uh, the less editing, I think the better feel you can get for the pace of the action. And I want to focus on strategy a little bit uh, on this video. And it looks like there's nobody out there. It's not uh, clear to me whether you can see them, but about a half a mile away, there's a collection of boats. And like I said, this is July. The um, fluke fishing has been pretty good, not spectacular, but there's a fair number of boats out. And as usual, I choose to stay away from the pack. So in this area, roughly a mile to a mile and a half off the beach, there's a ledge that runs parallel to the shoreline and the water drops from uh, roughly 20 to 80 feet and it's gradual and uh, not all areas are very steep sometimes it's uh, it's kind of sloped and um, like the boats that are about a half a mile away as we are they're along this ledge and they're all clumped together and um, but the ledge runs for miles and you don't need to be where all the boats are and I would much rather have our two lines be the only lines in the water, the only things that uh, the fish are seeing. Now if we go f half a mile away from here, uh, there's actually a couple party boats, uh, charter boats and so forth. So there's a lot of lines being dragged through the water and yeah, the fishing is good there too. but. Um, you know, I don't see any need to be where everybody else is, and this usually works out well for us. All right, we're fishing on an 18-inch minimum limit here. Uh, that fish for sure looks like it's going to make it. I try not to use the net. Uh, I hate getting tangles in the net, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll swing uh, small keepers, ones that are 18, 19 inches, and you know, when there's larger ones of 20 inches or, or so, uh, for sure I want to use the net and you'll see us doing that on this trip. Uh, as it often works out, there's a lot of fish that are really close to the, the legal limit and uh, so I'm measuring that one. I was pretty sure that one was small and this one's going to end up in the cooler. This is a good one. Alright, this is light tackle uh, rapid vertical jigging. Uh, the line is almost straight up and down and uh, the tackle I've gone through extensively on a previous video that was posted uh, just prior to this one and I'll refer you to that for all of the details but quickly I've got a seven foot tsunami classic rod rated 10 to 20 pound test line uh, the reels are quantum accurate and what I like about those reels are the flipping switches and what's very important is to use very thin line. In this case, we use 15 pound test spider wire stealth braid. And at the end, we have 20 pound test fluorocarbon with a one ounce S and S bucktail on the bottom. And about a foot above that, we have uh, tsunami glass minnow teasers, both the bucktail and the teasers tipped with. Uh, usually four inch Berkeley Gulp Alive, but on this trip we're, I'm experimenting a little bit and uh, trying some five inch ones as well just to see if it can uh, help cull out any larger ones. And uh, So that's, a, that's the basic rigging. And the Berkeley Gulp Alive that we're using are the four inch swimming mullets. And uh, white, green, both great colors, those are the ones that I use. I'm sure pink works just as well. Uh, I'm not too particular about the colors. I think if you use nothing but white, you'd be just fine. And a tackle store that I know carries all of that tackle that I mentioned, including the SNS Bucktails and the Tsunami Glass Minnows, the Quantum Accurus Reels, uh, is J&H Tackle in Oakdale, Long Island, and uh, both in the store and they have a website as well. All right, so that last one I got is definitely a keeper, but Mikey's got a, a good one on here and. In fact, at first I thought he might have had a striper because it took such a nice run. So, yeah, this is a real nice one. Nice job, big fish. Beauty, holy. Yeah, Mikey always seems like he's fishing pretty casually up there. Uh, but as you'll see through this video, he puts a lot of fish in the boat. So that rig actually had one of the larger gulps on the high hook, uh, the 5 inch swimming mullet. And the 5 inches quite a bit larger than the 4 inch because it's a lot bulkier, a lot fatter. But as things worked out, the fish hit the bucktail. The bucktail had a 4 inch swimming mullet on there. 
So we call these fish fluke in New York. Uh, in many states, they're called flounder. Yeah, we made that run. I know there's a few bass out here. So when you measure these fish, it's important to do it uh, with the mouth closed. And you see me there with the finger, keeping that mouth closed, checking very carefully. Uh, another important thing to do is don't trust the measurements on your cooler. Um, make sure you check those and make sure that they're accurate. And um, I learned that from a, a DEC officer that told me he's you know had people before that have had shorts and you know they didn't really mean to, but uh, they measured them on the cooler and the cooler was nowhere near accurate. So that's uh, definitely something to look out for. While I'm dealing with these fish in the boat, uh, I'm trying to keep Mikey in the water and. Uh, yeah, he's going to keep me pretty busy here. A nice little bite going over here all of a sudden. It's a fluke. I'm not meaning to leave that fish on the deck. I'm trying to get it in the box, but uh, as soon as he's going down, he's hooking up again. Alright, so right now I'm looking over at the Fish Finder GPS combination. That gives me a lot of information. One of the things I'm looking at is I've got GPS marks here, so in a quick glance I can see where I am in relation to those marks. Another important thing is the drift speed along with the drift direction. So those two things in combination, um, you know, that's telling me where I'm going and how fast I'm getting there and very important with that drift speed is I like to be in the half a mile an hour to 1.5 mile an hour range uh, that's what I find works best for this kind of fishing and if it gets faster than that I might put out a drift sock to try to slow it down or it might just move entirely to try to get away from that faster water Of course, I'm looking at the depth on the fish finder, and I'm also looking for bait, clouds of bait that will show up. Now, these fish are right on the bottom, so you're never going to see these guys on the fish finder. But what you will see are the bait schools that they're feeding on, so that's something that can uh, help you zero in on where these fish are. Now the birds, uh, gulls, terns, things like that, will also help you find the bait, and, and that can be a huge help. But what I've found is that sometimes, in cases where there's a lot of sea robins around, and uh, we're not actually seeing too many sea robins on this trip, which is a good thing. That's an accomplishment because there's been a lot of them around. Sea robins, uh, for those that are not fishing this area, are uh, interference uh, type fish that are not things we want to be catching. They're going to chew up our rigs. Um, not too many people eat them. They're just uh, considered to be undesirable interference fish. So what I've noticed uh, numerous times is in areas where the birds are working the heaviest, that's where the bait's getting pushed up to the top. And um, quite a few times I've seen that's where the thicker uh, concentrations of sea robins have been. So yeah, I'm going to look for the birds. If I start getting into a lot of sea robins underneath the birds like that, I will start working the periphery. In fact, this particular day, that's exactly the case. And I think that's why those boats are further up to the west, is that I can see from where I'm fishing. Uh, you can't really see on the video, the resolution's not good enough, but there's a lot of ar arctic turns there, and that's where the boats are. Um, but I had learned on previous trips to you know try to stay away from that a little bit, and uh, it paid off with better fluke. That's a sea robin there that he has on the line, so uh, 
we managed to stay away from them pretty well on this trip. I'm just barely able to get the rigs back together after uh, that fluke in the sea robin and uh, he's hooked up again and it's uh, another nice fish. as big as your other one. He was on the big goal. Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a floor, floor and chain. Yeah, I know. So we generally use three quarter to one and a half ounce bucktails for this kind of fishing. Uh, the objective is to use as light a weight bucktail as possible without scoping out. And scoping out means you just have to keep letting more line out to stay near the bottom and then you get this big angle on your line. So uh, for these depths, and we're fishing here um, about 20 to 25 feet of water, for these depths and these conditions, uh, one ounce bucktail is just about right. Missed me on the way up, but that's you got a nice one. So I tend to make short drifts. Uh, by short, I would say on this particular trip, I doubt uh, we moved more than 200 yards. That was about the area that, that we worked. And so you see me going back up for a drift here. And I'm not going very fast here. This is, I actually think it's like 11 or 12 miles an hour. And uh, you'll see I'm just going a couple hundred yards. And the reason for that is, you know, I've worked this area over now. I've got a pretty good idea where these fish are, are laying and um, you know they're not all over the place they are in concentrated in certain areas and I'm just gonna beat on those areas and, and that's it you know I moved up a couple hundred yards probably not even that you see I just throw it in reverse stop that boat dead and uh, you know go back and try to cover over where those fish are, have been hidden
So this is one of the reasons I don't like using the net if I don't have to because uh, and geez, now I've got a rig tangled in there and he's got a nice one on again so oh well it's gonna make a bit of a bigger mess now I've got two rigs in there but that's yeah, okay and uh, yeah it's another nice fish yes all right So our bag limit is five fish each, so uh, we've got nine in the box, and uh, if this one is big enough, this one's going to send us home. So I can see that the fish is hooked well, and... Uh, you know, even if it is a keeper, it's not a problem. I'm going to be able to swing this fish over, no problem. The line is strong enough to hook the fish is hooked well, so that's why I opted not to use the net, just trying to avoid trouble. And we'll see. So a nice thing about fishing with the bucktails and the teasers and using a fast hook set is it's very rare that you deep hook a fish. This is just one of those unusual circumstances where um, it got the hook kind of deep. I had to use the pliers to get it out. Uh, as it works out, this fish is going to be long enough to uh, end up in the frying pan anyway, so it all works out. All right, I hope you found this to be uh, educational and somewhat entertaining. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.